Hello, this is Nick Ackley, and I'm doing my library assignment on The Crow, specifically the special edition. I'm not too fluent with preview, so you'll have to bear with me as I only have one or two pictures, so I'll just have to be very clear in my answers. Uh, the special edition is a compilation of all the previous issues. Uh, it was written by James O. Barr who I'm pretty sure is both the writer and the artist. There were other people that contributed, but it was mostly him. For anyone who's interested, the special edition comes with 30 extra pages of never-before-seen artwork, a new introduction by Obar himself, and an entirely new closing segment. The original issues were published by Caliber Press, but the special edition was published by Gallery Books. So the full book of the special edition is 272 pages. Uh, it has a bit of a weird combination throughout the whole thing. Uh, the actual comic doesn't start in the beginning or end at the end. There's a lot of author notes and actually poems in between some of the issues, as well as inserted extra pages by Obar himself. So hopefully you'll forgive me if I'm a little off, but I believe that the comics itself, all the issues, are about 219 pages. That being said, I believe that the Act 1 ends fairly quickly in the story, around, about around page 9. The main character goes up to a thug and basically tells them that he's looking for a set of other thugs, thus giving us his goal and transitioning into Act 2. And then I believe that Act 3 begins around page 179, as it's pretty much just before the final battle. Therefore, it fits our model. So the story is a little bit complicated, but also simple at the same time. Our main character is Eric Draven, who is the crow and the face you see on the cover of the book. Thankfully, I don't have to worry about spoiling too much, as most of it is pretty laid out as you read the issues. Basically, his inner and outer goal is to hunt down and kill a bunch of criminals that killed his fiance. Plenty of Act 2 supports this conflict as he's constantly looking for each of them and ending them in various ways. In fact, to get a bit more in depth, I believe that each issue is actually its own beginning, middle, and end as he hunts down a different criminal each issue. And of course, if they can each do that, then I believe that the overall story has a very fine beginning, middle, and end. It's very clear what his goal is, and where he goes, and what he does. And I really like the resolution. It, After all is said and done, Eric is finally relieved of his revenge. It's all a very hard and intense journey, but I think it holds itself up very well. There aren't too many characters in this story, besides Eric and the very criminals he's hunting. I believe that it's Eric himself that has the biggest character arc in the story. He has this deep sort of loathing for himself, because he kind of blames himself for his fiance's death. It's actually alluded to quite a lot in the story. Some of those extra pages that are in the special edition have a lot of touching flashbacks between him and his fiance, and it really sort of allows you to see how much he misses her and how much they loved each other. And then even in the extra closing segment, it's brought up to him that he needs to forgive himself as the final act of being able to pass on. As a more artistic sort of comic book, it doesn't have the usual captions that show the transitions, but I still think it does fairly well to show them. For example, there's a transition where he goes to a pawn shop, 
and the sign for the shop is very clearly displayed in the panel to show you that he's there. Or maybe he goes to a building that's a hideout for some criminals and you'll see the sign above the building. Otherwise, there are moments where he's just standing in a new location and he has a line of dialogue that shows or he basically tells you where he is and what he's doing. And before I forget, most of the establishing shots are fantastic. Like wide camera angle that show a city street or the building he's walking next to with him prominently displayed in the picture. There is, admittedly, no date and time, but you just sort of get the feel like those things don't matter. Like, this city is, first of all, always night. I can't actually think of any panels where he's walking around in the daytime. And we're always in the same city. Every location is within the same city. It's always run down and full of criminal activity, and it has this sort of timeless feeling. As for McLeod's ideas on transitions, I noticed most of the transitions were subject to subject, but there was a good handful of action to action as well. And now we're at the page as a mini-comic part. So there are a good, most of the comic is has this effect. I can actually think of a few pages that have a beginning, middle, and end, as well as their own page turners. Of course, this isn't the case for the whole thing. There are plenty of the action scenes or flashback scenes that are kind of self-contained and don't follow the full structure of a mini-comic. But anyway, let's get on to the directional flow. I believe that this story has a pretty fine effective use of directional flow. Uh, once again, I <laughs> wish I could show you some examples. But uh, I can assure you that it has the normal Z pattern. Also, most if not all of the panels don't confuse you when you read them. There's a clear pathway from start to finish on every page. There are some scenes that get a little hectic. Uh, a lot of the fighting and action scenes, uh, most notably the final action scene, seems a little crazy. And basically, you know, Eric is fighting all these criminals and he's just completely slaughtering them and there's bullets flying everywhere and blood flying and sometimes while you can still see the pathway of the panels uh, it gets a little chaotic as you take in the whole thing and now here we are at the end yeah it was a bit so now I'm gonna talk about how I highly recommend this to my classmates to read well, first, I just want to say that um, my friends were the ones to introduce this to me. Uh, that kind of answers that other question of if I would recommend it to my friends. Uh, my friends back at home in Texas, they read a whole bunch of comics, and they know about The Crow, and they suggested it to me. They said it was right up my alley, and I just never had the time to, you know, go to the library and check it out. So I'm really happy that I got to do that here in this class. But yeah, uh, if you love the supernatural or revenge stories or I'm trying to find the right word, a sort of dark, gritty, uh, black and white. By the way, the special edition is all black and white. Uh, there's no color. Uh, and a little bit more on the story, since there wasn't much reason to say it before, so I'll say it now. Uh, Eric, it, he is a supernatural anti-hero, basically. He, uh, he died on the same night as his fiance, and was brought back from the dead to take his revenge. And that's sort of the appeal 
I really liked it, at least, in the story. Uh, I love that sort of monstrous, unstoppable force against the bad guys. Like, I kind of think of it as, like, Batman himself kind of pulls it off. Like, all you, all they have to do is stand there, and the bad guys shake in fear. And you really get that with the crow. And there's, there's a little bit of madness in it, like, uh, because of what Eric went through, he kind of, he's a little loopy. He says a lot of random things and likes to play with his enemies. And as for the powers he wields, uh, he's basically just invulnerable and mortal. Like, he can't feel pain. Uh, he regenerates, you know, because he's not dead. <laughs> And he's literally this unstoppable force for his enemies. There's all these fight scenes where uh, he gets shot or stabbed or cut and the enemies freak out. But at the heart of it all, and this is what really drew me in in the first place, is you really get a feel for Eric as a character. Like, you feel the pain he went through. And he's generally a nice guy, like... And he has these moments where he's less monstrous and less crazy, and you really sort of connect with him. Like, there's a scene where, like I mentioned before with the store, with the pawn shop, he goes into this pawn shop because it's where one of the criminals pawned his fiance's wedding ring, and he just breaks into it and mindlessly searches for the ring to have back and a cop shows up and tries to stop him and since this is a simple nice cop eric doesn't try to hurt him or anything and he just sort of wants to get past him and the cop keeps telling him to stop or he'll shoot and he just sort of bows and puts his head up against the barrel and he's like go ahead i won't do anything <laughs> and then there's like there's this really sweet subplot in the story where he meets, on his way to look for one of the criminals, he meets this ragged, almost homeless-looking little girl, and he talks with her for a little bit, and they sort of become friends, and he cheers her up because she's sort of down, and you really get to see this more human side to Eric than in most of the other pages. So yeah, I probably rambled a little bit, but... Basically, yeah, I really love the story, and I highly recommend this to anyone who wants to read it. So, as one final fun fact, here's that second picture I was talking about. Uh, this has been made into a few movies, and even a TV show, I heard. <laughs> uh, I've only seen the first movie, and I would recommend it. I really like the movie. I'm not really sure if it's socially liked or not, but I liked it, and I thought it at least portrayed the concept fairly well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for joining me in this video. I hope I got everything, and I'll talk to you guys in the comments.